I was gonna do my intro here, but it's too bright. So let's go under this apple tree and we'll do it in there. All right, that's a little bit better. Sorry about this crazy lighting. I probably picked one of the worst times to come out here and do a massive harvest. It's late afternoon, it's the hottest part of the day, but it took me a little bit to psych myself up for this. I have my apple tree here right behind me. I've got three of these apple trees and since last time I did a harvest video with you, it's been two weeks. And I told myself in that last video, we were gonna be harvesting these apples, but I had so many other things to harvest and I went inside and dealt with them. I did not have, the energy or the brain capacity to deal with these apples. And I've been putting it off because I think I knew that as soon as I pick these apples means I need to get inside and I need to process them, which is gonna be a lot of work. And I'm now ready to do it. And so since I have the energy and the determination to do it, we're gonna do it regardless of what time of day it is. So we've got this huge apple tree here. We've got two other apple trees we need to harvest. I've got my handy dandy wheelbarrow here. I think that we're gonna have at least two wheelbarrows full. I could be wrong, but if it has any indication of how much we harvested with those two pear trees, I think there's more apples than there are pears. So it's gonna be a busy day. I also have Ziploc bags, paper bags of all different sizes because we're not only gonna be harvesting tomatoes today and peppers and a bunch of other actual veggies to eat, it is seed harvest time. I have zinnia seeds to harvest, I have calendula seeds to harvest, we have pea seeds, we have, what else do we have? Oh, we have our black beans that are ready to harvest, we have our, I think there's more seeds out there that need to be harvested. Oh, we have figs that need to be harvested today. Figs are kind of an interesting thing. I didn't know much about figs, but figs kind of ripen. The tree does not all ripen at one time like an apple tree. There's kind of like these waves and I'm starting to get my first set of figs on the tree. So we need to get those in and I want to get those dehydrated. So let's just get to it. It's going to be a busy afternoon. We're going to be out here for a couple hours probably and I'm excited. So thank you guys for hanging out with me as I'm in my garden if you're new around here. Here I'm Becky. I do a lot of canning, bulk food cooking, buying in bulk. We do gardening, we do food preservation, we do a little bit of organizing and cleaning. More of that to come this fall. A lot of cooking, just basically anything home and food is my jam. So welcome if you're new, consider subscribing if any of that interests you. And let's just get to it. It's gonna be a busy afternoon and I'm excited you're here with me. As I'm sitting here talking, I actually see a bunch of Asian pears that I missed. There's probably like six or seven on the tree that I missed. And there are a couple Bartlett pear trees. So Bartlett pear, and there are a couple Bartlett pears that I missed. So we're gonna get those too. So let's just get right to it. Let's get the biggest project done first. So we have it done and we can move on to kind of the fun stuff, which is kind of the seeds. I'm kind of excited. I live in Washington state. I live in Southwest Washington, about 10 minutes north of Portland, Oregon in zone 8B. And if you're new, this is only my second year gardening. I did inherit these trees when I bought this property, but the garden I put in all myself and I did not really save that many seeds last year. So this is gonna be fun that we're gonna be saving some more seeds. I am not a seed expert, but it's gonna be fun and we're gonna hang out together. And then next year we're gonna try to grow the seeds and see what we got. So let's just get right to it. This is gonna be a lot of work. We had some 115 degree days. So some of the apples got burnt. And so these aren't gonna be no good for us, but these are gonna be perfect food for the chickens. some raspberries. I don't know how these got over here. Oh. I'm gonna have to transplant those. Mm. I'm nervous what I could find in these ferns trying to get to these apples in here. I don't know what that was, if it was anything, but something dropped on me. <laughs> I've only done this little section here. 
and you can see I haven't even touched that yet and look at this <laughs> so we're gonna have a lot of apples this year let's keep going I did not realize how many apples I'm gonna be getting this year and honestly I'm not sure what we're gonna be doing with all of them so it'll be fun you and I are gonna figure it out together I'll bring you along for the whole journey and we are gonna figure out what to do with all these apples You see our little friend? He was actually just sitting on this apple here and I startled him. I love that. I'm gonna move this cutie to the pear tree. Here we go, go in. Here we go, that way I don't disturb him. We got this tree harvested. I had to run inside and grab three big boxes because this one tree filled my entire wheelbarrow plus a box I mean, there's maybe like six or seven, maybe 15 apples on the tree that are left that are like really small. One thing I do know about apple trees, which I know hardly anything, is you don't actually want to leave fruit on the trees because you don't want to have them rot on there because that can bring in disease. So I will eventually take those off. But for right now, we just need to keep picking. My dad just texted me and said he is on his way and he's going to be helping me with some yard work. He's surprising me with that. And so I have to be available for him when he's available. If he's willing to help, I'm going to be there to help him as well. So let's just keep picking and getting as much done as we can until we need to take a break to help my dad with landscaping work on my property. <laughs> this is the other wheelbarrow I grabbed along with these two boxes. This is the tree we're gonna pick right now and there's bigger apples on here. I don't know the varieties of any of the apples that I have because I inherited this tree from the previous owner, but they're definitely I would say this might be like a pink lady or something because there's a lot more pink to it, but I am not sure what these are. They're really big and really tasty. There is a little bit of bug damage on these two that I just picked. So that just means we need to process these sooner than later. How beautiful, absolutely perfect, flawless, stunning apple. That was a lot more work than I anticipated. I am sweaty, I am hot. My hair got pulled on multiple times. <laughs> but we got two wheelbarrows full. We got two boxes full of apples. I still have one more apple tree to harvest. I'm eating one of the, I'm gonna call them pink ladies. I don't know what they are, but they're really good. I kind of just threw the yucky ones on the ground. I'm gonna give those to the chickens. I'm not gonna pick them up today. I might do that tomorrow. I, my dad hasn't got here yet, so we were able to get that second apple tree completely picked before he got here. Since he's not here yet, let's go ahead into the garden and start harvesting some seeds. And I, we have black beans that are ready to harvest today too. These are my favorite zinnias that I grew this year. I got all my zinnia seeds from Dollar Tree. You get a pack for 25 cents. And But you don't know what you're getting. It's just like a multi-mixture of all different seeds. And I have one that went to seed right here. So we're going to collect those seeds and I'm going to mark what they are. So I have this paper packet here. And I'm doing paper because I want these seeds to be able to breathe. So these right here are the seeds. So I'm gonna put these in this envelope and we will mark it that they're my favorite. There's a few petals in here. I'm just gonna take some of these petals out. I don't care if there's petals in there.
I don't know much about saving seeds, so you guys might correct me if I'm wrong. I'm gonna let a couple of these other ones that I like, because this is going to seed right here, and I'm gonna harvest this a little later. I think this one might be ready. These are the seeds right here at the end. So let's mark this. I don't know what I should call these. Maybe ombre. Oh, you guys, I'm a mess. Thanks for being willing to hang out with me even when I'm in this state because if, if uh, I was to get fully ready for every video, you wouldn't have videos. So I just appreciate that you're willing to hang out with me in all states of put togetherness. Okay, so we're gonna call this ombre. Favorite, I'm gonna mark favorite. Oh, my dad's here. I'm not gonna close this because I might take these inside and lay them out to dry just a little bit more. But now that my dad's here, I'm gonna go hang with him. We're gonna work on some landscaping projects and this is gonna have to wait. So my dad just got here and we're having a snack before we go to do landscaping. Is apple good? The apple's amazing. <laughs> he I've got my, my, work, my work stuff, so I'm ready to go another day. He's eating apples from this tree and the one I was eating earlier was from this tree. One of my first videos, maybe my fifth or sixth video or something like that, my dad and mom came and we actually pruned these apple trees. So we're gonna do it. We Last year was our first year and we kind of watched these trees grow and we we're gonna have a game plan for next year of how we're gonna prune them because this one especially needs a lot of pruning up there. And so we kind of watched where the fruit grew and where it didn't grow and all that stuff. and. So the only apple tree we have left to harvest is from this one. It's all looking good and it tastes amazing. <laughs> I don't know if it's all looking good. This is what used to be my fire pit area, but there's tons of weeds in here and I have tons of brush that needs to be burnt, but we're on a fire ban, so I can't burn anything and it's just kind of got messy. So I'm excited for once harvest is done that we can get in here and kind of get this cleaned up too. All right, friends, it's the next day. My dad came over and we worked on the yard for another two and a half, three hours-ish. And when he's available, I need to be available. So I had to put the harvesting on hold and now we're back out in the garden and we are gonna be doing some more harvesting right now, right behind me. These are some white... Ow! My knee's on wood chips and that hurts. These are some white marigolds and I just pulled the head off. And can you see right in there that black? That is the seeds that are right in there. And I'm trying to think, should I? I think I'm just gonna take the whole head like this. We'll stick it in one of these paper bags. One of you guys sent me these paper bags and I'm loving them. We are gonna write white marigold on here so it can continue to dry. I'm gonna leave the bag kind of open like this and I'll just set it like this. So this is white marigold. These were kind of expensive seeds, so I'm glad that I'm able to save them. I didn't actually grow orange or yellow marigolds because orange and yellow is not my favorite color, even though I'm just about to go harvest these yellow zinnias. They're kind of like a green yellow and they're really pretty. But I really thought these white ones were interesting. I didn't, the only thing I didn't like about them, I'm trying to harvest a See, I think I brought my scissors. Did I bring scissors? I don't think I brought scissors out here. Now we've got our red zinnias. That's what these are. These seeds are just coming right off here. So these little guys at the end, these little dark parts, that is the seed right there. I don't know if zinnias cross pollinate and so we might get, you know, an interesting color or an interesting, you know, a double versus a single but I'm all about saving a little bit of money and experimenting. That's kind of how I do things. I'm, I'm really good at just flying by the seat of my pants and trying things. So let's just try this. So let's just try this together. I'm trying to just get the seeds in here and not necessarily all the petals. I'm not gonna be perfect at it, but it's gonna be good enough. Let's throw some of those seeds in there and see if they sprout. A few of you guys have asked what a volunteer plant is because I say volunteer plants in my garden tour videos a lot. And what a volunteer plant is, is it's a plant that seeds itself from the year before. So an annual is a plant. These are red zinnias. 
I'm, I should probably put the date on these. All the plants in my garden beds, my raised bed, are annuals. Annuals just means that you have a seed, you plant it, it grows, and then it dies. And that plant will produce seed for the next year. Now, a volunteer plant is when those seeds that grew in that annual plant themselves. So like I just took those zinnia seeds and threw them in this bed. If those seeds sprout next year, that's considered a volunteer. It means that it just grew by itself. I didn't in the winter take a seed, put it in the little thing, grow it up, or specifically plant seeds in specific areas. It just means that the plant planted itself. And that's what plants do. So last year, actually, why I have so many volunteer tomatoes, like right here, which we need to get to harvesting right now. The reason there are so many volunteer tomatoes in this bed and back there, if you watch my last garden tour, I'll link a full garden tour up here and down in the description. But I had tomatoes in this bed and I had tomatoes out there. And quite honestly, when some of them were rotten, I just kind of smashed them into the ground and I was hoping for volunteers. That was actually one of my goals. And my volunteer plants are doing fantastic. It actually looks like, I didn't pick that. There's a random tomato on the ground out there, so I need to get that. The only thing I'm bummed about my volunteers is I didn't trellis them, because I was like, I just want to see what it's like to grow tomatoes that sprawl on the ground. Well, two reasons you don't do that. One, disease. Disease for tomatoes usually comes from the soil, and so these plants have more like spots on them. They're growing fantastic, so many tomatoes. The other reason you don't wanna just let them sprawl is the tomatoes tend to get knocked off. I can actually see, do you see right there? There's a green tomato that's knocked off that plant. And bugs, bugs can get into the tomato and eat them a lot easier if they're on the ground. So next year when I have volunteers, we are going to be propping them up. You see how there's spots on them? This is signs of disease damage, and this is because they're on the ground. My tomato plants that aren't just laying on the ground don't have that issue. So something tried to take a bite out of this tomato. And that is why <laughs> that is no longer on the plant. But there are some beautiful tomatoes in here. I'm going to pick this one. And this one. I think I'm gonna pick these ones even though they're not fully ripe. I'm gonna let them ripen inside. There is a little spot on there. See, they just have a lot more, like, that's not rotten, I don't think. I think that's healed itself over. But even though these aren't fully ripe, they're more susceptible to issues on the ground like this. So we're gonna take them inside and I'm gonna let them finish ripen. If they start to rot or something, then I'll deal with that. But I wanna give them a chance. And then there's one here. These ones look a lot better, but there are like scars and stuff on them, so. Do you see these dark spots? That's the green tomato that I was pointing to earlier. Right there, right there, right there. Those are deer prints, I'm pretty sure. So the reason why half of these tomatoes were no longer on the tomato plants, pretty sure some deer was, that's a big hole. Let me show you how big that hole is. That hole goes halfway up my hand. Pretty sure a deer was clomping around in here, causing a mess, but I see a red tomato over there we're gonna get. I don't even think this one was eaten. This doesn't have bite marks or anything. This was stepped on because it looks like someone just went and squished it shut. So this one is not savable. This is going to the chickens. So enough about tomatoes. Let's get back to seed saving. We're gonna get back to tomatoes. I have a ton of tomatoes to harvest. I didn't realize how many I had until I was walking through here yesterday. Um, but I have, I have calendula here. Now calendula is super good for your hands. I've been harvesting this calendula all summer long and dehydrating it and we're gonna go inside I've made one soap making video with it but I have a bunch of home remedies for hands my hands uh, I have super bad eczema on my hands I get it in between my fingers really really bad and calendula is supposed to be really good for it so I'm gonna be making some homemade salves with it but I want to harvest the seeds and the seeds are probably one of the easiest plants to harvest the seeds from 
the flower dies back and then the seeds are these like kind of dinosaur prehistoric looking pod things and I have a bunch of different colors these ones are kind of a yellow they've almost all died back but they're a really petite yellow flower and they're just really pretty and that's what these ones are when the flower first dies they turn green like this but when they turn brown like this this means they're ready to harvest so I don't know exactly which color these are but we're gonna just harvest a bunch of seeds my sister wants to get into growing calendula too so I'm gonna try to harvest enough seeds for her as well because we have so many seeds in here these are what the seeds look like they almost look like bones or something they're really interesting looking I'm gonna harvest calendula from a bunch of different areas I just dropped a ton on the floor which is fine or on the ground I should say but they'll reseed themselves and we'll have a bunch of volunteer calendula which I do have all over here and I'll show you that in a minute but we're just gonna go through and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle seeds in here and I can see I'm dropping a ton and I'm fine with that so here's one packet filled I threw my pin and now I don't know where I put my pin I'm gonna mark on this packet yellow I'm gonna put petite yellow and light orange calendula I would show you up close me writing this because I think that would be cute for the shot but my handwriting and spelling is pretty atrocious so we're just gonna go with that and you'll see it from there I'm gonna harvest some calendula in some other areas but I want to show you these beautiful yellow zinnias here they're almost like um, there's that lime variety of zinnias that you can buy specifically but like I said I bought all these zinnias from a Dollar Tree seed packet and it was just a mix of random things and these are stunning let me bring you in closer I honestly don't know that much about flowers but I think this one is considered a single because there's only a few petals but on this same plant I have what I think are called doubles because you can see all these beautiful layers of petals and they're almost kind of like lime green toward the bottom of them and I absolutely love these which is kind of surprising to me because I don't love yellow I mean I like yellow but it's not my favorite and I prefer these big fluffy ones and I have one right down here which I believe would be a yellow and I believe that it's going to be one like this because it's fluffy and we are going to save the seeds from this oh sorry dog hair the life of having three dogs there's the seeds see if I can get them in there and kind of keep some of these no we're just gonna put them on there from what I understand it is best to save your seeds in paper so they can breathe So what we'll do this coming spring is we'll plant a bunch of these hoping that maybe one or two of them sprout. Since I only have, let's see, and we'll do that. We'll just throw some and hopefully some will plant themselves and we'll have some volunteers. And we'll let that compost in place. And then I have another one in here. Did you guys see that? There was an earwig in there. Yuck. We officially scared Mr. Earwig out and we're gonna finish getting these seeds into here. In this same area, we have some more white marigold seeds that I think I'm gonna throw in that container. These pink ones, I love these ones too, but I don't see any that are, I don't think these ones are quite ready. There's two dead ones on, well, let's see. There is this one here and this one for these pink ones, but they're not quite ready. I think I want maybe this one to go to seed or this one to collect seeds from that. And I have some new buds, but I really need to get out here and just cut all these dead ones back. But who has time for that when it's preservation season? <laughs> these are Dollar Tree zinnias too. These ones are all kind of looking a little bit worse for the wear, but these are almost as tall as me, which is kind of crazy. This is only my second. Oh, I have some seeds in here. I'm going to tuck that back. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to let this continue to go to seed a little bit more before I harvest this light pink one. 
these ones were gorgeous too. See, I don't know much about Cinnias. Tell me, on the same plant, is that normal to have the different shaped zinnias, like the single versus the double? And this one's kind of interesting because the petals are only on the bottom and then there's this big gap and then more petals on the top versus like right here, there's just a layer of petals. And I actually really, really like this one, orange and pink or fuchsia, I should say. That's why I love that ombre one. That, that's my favorite because it's got the different colors in it. But there is one in here that might be Yes, these ones are ready. So I got some seeds from here. So I ran out of those paper bags. Oh yeah, look at that. Those are all ready. So what I need to do is run inside and go get some more of those paper bags so that I can save seeds from this one. I'm assuming if you save seed from the one that you like the shape of it, that's what it's more likely gonna turn out as. But I don't know. So I need to stop picking these. I'm gonna go run inside and get more paper bags. We got a whole stack. So I didn't bring as many bags out here as I would need. I keep trying to stick that pen in my mouth so that I can do something with my hands, but then I can't talk. So I had no idea how much fun this was gonna be. I did not do this last year. I think I only grew maybe one or two zinnia plants. I did grow some marigolds, but I didn't like them. I, I bought, they were starts. All these plant, all these zinnias were all ones that I had started from seed myself. And I think that's why I'm having like I'm super excited about this. I had no idea how much fun I was gonna have out here just doing this this morning, and I'm having a great time. <laughs> okay, so these I'm gonna call, so we have our ombre, what color should I call? I'm gonna call them, what would that be where there's like a layer or something and a layer, like, I'm really bad with naming things. Naming things is always stressful to me. So we're gonna call them pink, double step because there's like a there's like a step it's not like a double where there's like tons of like the yellow where there's a ton of petals there's like a step so we're gonna pink double step if you guys have a better name for it let me know and this is 2021 so we got that all right so let's move on to we should get some more calendula seeds. Let me show you how different colors calendula can be. So the first year I grew calendula, it was right along here last year. And these are calendula, this is calendula, this is calendula here and here. I did not plant any of these calendulas this year. These were all from seed that planted itself. So these are a perfect example of what a volunteer plant is, is it's one that just planted itself. I'm gonna harvest this one and I'm gonna dehydrate that. We'll take that inside along with these ones. But you can see how there's different colors. So we have orange, yellow, and then we have these kind of pink ones. My chickens are currently in the process of laying eggs because it is early this morning. They almost look like bones. Do you see that? I think they're fascinating looking. You know, now that I'm looking at these, I don't know, tell me in the comments, I don't think these are actually seeds. These outside ones, I think the seeds are these brown parts. But tell me, see how, do you see how there's different colors in there? I think the white part is not actually seed, but we're just gonna save everything. I'm going down to write pink calendula on here and I can see out of the corner of my, and I can see out of the corner of my eye, there is a huge tomato that has a huge bite out of it. Not thrilled. You guys sometimes ask me, how do I keep pests out of my garden? I don't. Oh, and one of my, my yellow squash plant is completely dead. Hmm. It didn't produce hardly anything for me anyway, so I'm not that concerned about it. Like maybe two squashes. I had a really, really hard time getting my yellow squash to get pollinated. I don't know why there's thousands of bees in here. Not thousands, there's a lot of bees in here. But, and my pumpkins and winter squash and zucchini had no problem being pollinated. But my darned yellow squash, let me show you. It's just shriveled up and dead. Now I do have some, I think, I do have some powdery mildew starting. That's what happens in September around here. But that one is just shriveling up and that's dead. I don't know what happened there. 
This pumpkin was sitting here like this. This is a Cinderella pumpkin. And I didn't know if it was ready to be harvested because I think you want the stem to be very dry before you harvest it. And I tried to pull it over to look at it and I broke it on accident. So I sure hope that this was ready to harvest. It is, it probably weighs like 15 or 20 pounds. It's pretty heavy. We, maybe we should go weigh it together. But first we got more harvesting to do. Now we're gonna harvest some cayenne peppers. I harvested, when I did that last big massive harvest with you guys, I harvested a ton of cayenne peppers and I made a cayenne pepper hot sauce and I've already eaten half the jar. I think I got six jars of it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. In Incredible. I love hot sauce. I'm, I love anything. I'm, I like spicy food. If you want to watch that video, it's going to be up here and down in the description box because I'm hoping that I can at least make one or two more batches of that because it's phenomenal. Do you guys like hot sauce as much as I do? I, my husband is not a hot sauce person. He, he tries his best. He, he's not really a spicy person. So I do cook all of my food pretty mild so that he can actually eat it. And then I spice it up with hot sauce but I was reading some of the ingredients on some of the hot sauces and I'm not super happy with all of them but my homemade hot sauce there's nothing weird in it and it is so good I grew up and my dad is a huge oh I didn't mean to pick that one green a huge spicy fan lover and so we always growing up would always put hot sauce on everything I want to make the hot sauce red, so I'm trying to wait until they all turn red before I pick them. I have a bunch of red ones inside that I got the other day that I haven't done anything with yet, so I'm hoping maybe I could do a double batch. Look how pretty that is. I decided to let one of my girls hang out with me. She's been kind of being picked on. Literally, she's got, you can't see it on this side of her wing, but on her other side, she's kind of got a bald spot where I think the chickens are picking on her. So I've been letting her kind of hang out with me in the garden while I work. You can see how a mess it is. I mean, I don't have time to deadhead everything. These are all volunteer calendula. Here, there, here, and they're all going to seed and I'm kind of just letting them happen. Oh, and then we have our volunteer tomatoes all along here and there's a ton of green ones and I actually see some red ones here. Let's go ahead and get right now. There's so many tomatoes in here. It's pretty incredible. But I only see two red ones. There's deer poo. So that was a deer that was tromping around in here this morning. Or yeah, I think this morning. I have volunteer tomatoes in here too. So we're going to pick some of these romas. You can see these plants are sitting on the dirt and you really don't want that. So I'm going to bring that inside and ripen these inside so that they don't get disease. I have a bell pepper plant here. They're little, but I'm gonna bring them inside. All these romas, we're gonna ripen inside. These are sweet pepper. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to grab that one. disheveled she looks I just I feel for her I'm gonna let her hang out if she eats something I don't really care you see that spot on her right right there they make these things see she's fertilizing my garden they make these things that you can put on the back of them like a shield and I think I would have to buy one of those if you guys have a good resource for that for me maybe I can just google it but I think I need to get one ASAP for her just don't pick on my pumpkin so these ones were those volunteer romas. They're not ready at all. And I do prefer to ripen my tomatoes on the vine, but because they were on the ground, I figured there's more likelihood of a chance of them getting disease than ripening. So we're gonna harvest them now. And then I've got these peppers that are, oh my gosh, they smell so good. So let's get a bunch of tomatoes. I had to go run and grab a box to harvest some pretty big tomatoes we have down this tomato trellis. I'm a little out of breath. 
I'm kind of in a hurry now because my parents are gonna be coming over in about an hour and we still have a lot of harvesting to do. You see that? There is one little blemish on it, but we'll go inside and cut that off. But I grew this. I cannot believe it. This is huge. I am a little bummed about that, but that's what it is. I think we are going to be canning salsa this weekend. We have way more tomatoes out here than I anticipated, which is awesome. So I have a new plan for next year. I am not going to prune my cherry tomatoes like I pruned my slicing tomatoes. I don't think cherry tomatoes need it. I need to do some more research on it, but I feel like I could have gotten way more cherry tomatoes if I didn't prune them because cherry tomatoes grow so fast they don't take as much energy to actually produce the fruit. Whereas, you know, if you're growing like that one I just picked, that really big one, which I'll tell you the name of that one in just a second, the plant I think needs more energy to produce the fruit. But I think I went way too heavy on the pruning on some of these cherry tomatoes. And I think I lost a lot of potential fruit because of that. Can you guys weigh in on that? So this really big one is a pineapple tomato and I'm actually surprised that I got this fruit because that plant, I on accident pruned the top of it. Like I said, I went a little heavy when it comes to pruning and uh, I think I had three plants where I just pruned the top off. So then some of the suckers had to grow up and create the new plant. So that plant was very stunted. So I'm pretty happy with that actually. And there's one more big one on there that we'll get in probably a couple days. If you're not new to my garden, this is where my favorite tomato plants are. They're the healthiest. They're producing the biggest fruit. They are just beautiful. And I'm going to one, grow tomatoes over here again next year. And two, I'm going to plant these varieties. These two are big beef. I know for sure. I have a Martha Washington. I have a Chef's Choice and a Brandywine. I know. I don't remember. Can you just see the perfection in this? It's just, oh, we dropped a tomatillo. I think I'm gonna focus on hybrid tomatoes next year. A Little bit more real TV. This right here is another one of my herb beds that I planted and I had all my sage in here. Good thing I harvested it because when I was gone for two weeks in that garden tour video, I don't think I mentioned that all these plants died. <laughs> so I have two herb beds that just croaked and that's on me and we'll do it again next year. No, we won't kill the plants next year. We'll try to grow the plants and keep them alive next year. But in all realness, we might just kill them again next year. Who knows? That's not the goal, but it's always the possibility. <laughs> you see this perfection? You win some, you lose some. This is perfection. So if you were in my last big harvest video, you know that I pulled out calendula, zinnia, and chamomile. And I wanna show you just what a volunteer is here. This is a calendula seed that sprouted, calendula seed here, and these are chamomile that is sprouted. Now I doubt these are gonna to get to maturity before our frost, and none of these plants are frost hardy, but that's exactly, and I don't know what that is. That looks like, that doesn't look like a weed. That looks like something, maybe a zinnia plant. And so you can just see how plants will plant themselves 
if you let them go to seed, which is awesome because this is a whole lot easier than having to try to do it yourself inside. And I have found just in the two years, two seasons I've been gardening, that your volunteer plants are usually a whole lot stronger and hardier than the ones you try to start inside. If you wonder what's on my hands here, that's called tomato tar. It's actually this black stuff. It's actually the essential oils. This is not dirt. The essential oils that are on the outside of tomatoes that make them smell like tomato plants. And it's, it's oil that gets stuck in your hands and it's kind of green, but then it turns black and it's really hard to wash off. And that is just what my hands tend to look like. I do try to wash this off before I have to go to work so that my hands don't look dirty, but it is hard to get off and and yeah, tomato tar, <laughs> that's just part of gardening. But like I was saying, these plants, I don't think are gonna make it through the winter, but that's what a volunteer is. And I'm loving that I actually know now what some of these starts look like. It is time now to harvest our black bean seeds. These were actually seeds that I planted last year that I grew and saved the seed and planted them. And I wanna try to can these, I wanna have homegrown black beans on my pantry shelf from plants that I had saved the seed from from the year before. And we have over half of a bed right here to harvest. I have some over there to harvest. And let's just see how much black beans we get. I had my husband turn the irrigation system off last night so that these wouldn't be watered because I don't want these pods watered. The goal now is to get them to dry out. It's gonna take me a while to do this. Apparently some of the pods have already opened and fallen because here's a black bean that just sprouted. Obviously that's not gonna be good and that's not gonna grow anything, but we definitely, it's time to get these plants out of here. I decided to pull up all the black beans because I thought it might be easier instead of having to dig through all of those plants to just pull the plant up, pull the beans off, or yeah, black beans, and then put them in this bowl. And what I'm gonna do is take these plants because I don't have time to cover this garden right now and I don't want a bunch of weeds growing in there because there is some time for that. I'm just gonna throw the plant in the bed. And Miss Olive here is gonna hang out with me since I just pulled all this stuff up and she's gonna have fun digging around in here because there's probably lots of bugs that she gets to dig through. Nope, oh, she's eating a black bean. Or she spit it out. Just throw that in there. I'm gonna let it decompose in there, compost in place. Put that nutrient right back into the soil. In this jungly mess, I did an experiment and I planted black beans between all my kale plants. I'm gonna pull them all up today and we'll see how they did. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh. That's a lot of cucumbers. I think we outdid ourselves from last massive harvest. This is only half of the black beans. I didn't feel like carrying over the other bowl. We have tons of cucumbers, two huge wheelbarrows filled to the brim with apples, and I have two big boxes probably filled with another 50 pounds of apples, but I didn't feel like carrying them over for this thumbnail. And then a whole box of tomatoes, that's not even half the tomatoes that we have out here to still harvest, that's probably one eighth. So we have a lot of tomatoes. We got an entire bowl filled with peppers. We're gonna be making some more hot sauce and I think we're gonna be making some salsa with these tomatoes. So hopefully I get to that this weekend, but I also have to figure out something to do with these apples. Oh, and we didn't harvest one of the apple trees. So we still have one full apple tree to harvest. And one of the reasons why I was like not wanting to harvest these apples 
is because that means now I have to go inside and manage them and process them, which is awesome. It's just gonna be a lot of work. So I'm excited about it. I actually think I'm gonna call my two sisters over and see if we can do an apple processing party. Uh, I haven't asked them about it yet, but I think that's gonna be on the list. I have a ton of plans with these apples. We're gonna be making applesauce, apple cider, a way that you can do it at home pretty affordably, even if you don't have one of those apple presses. We've got apple butter, apple pie, apple cake, tons of things coming. And the tomatoes, the black beans, we're gonna be canning those up, letting them dry. I still actually have to pick probably half the black beans off the plant, but my parents are coming over. We're gonna finish that front yard project. We've been totally landscaping the front yard. Probably not the best timing for me, but my parents are available to help. So when anyone's available to help, I will change my schedule and work it out. And I'll just, it just means that I gotta get more done. I have to do, I have to process this. So we're just gonna get more done. We're gonna get the front yard landscaped and we're gonna get all this processed because there's no other choice but to do it. So we have to do it. That is what fall and winter are for, are for relaxation. We just have probably another month or so of press, 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 get the garden to bed, and then we get to relax. That's one thing I love about doing this, gardening, homesteading, doing all these things, is that there are true seasons. Summer, spring, you work hard, and then you get to relax and be cozy inside all winter long. And that's what I plan to do. We are gonna be doing a ton of stuff by the wood stove, a ton of cooking, a ton of baking, and things like that, and I'm looking forward to that. But for now, we just have to keep on keeping on. Like Dory says, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, and we'll get it done together. Oh, we also got all those seeds. I have, I counted up six different packages of seeds we harvested today. Actually eight if you count the black beans, because technically those are seeds as well. I can't believe how much fun I had harvesting those seeds. I think we need to start harvesting some tomatoes seeds. Now, I need to think through that. I need to think through that but I'm gonna definitely save some tomato seeds this year but I haven't even thought about it so we'll have to think so I'll have to think through that and then we'll talk about it together when we get to that point I did put miss chicken away so all the chickens are away that was fun having her out with me I do need to look into getting something to put on her back because they certainly are pecking on her which really irritates me why I don't know why they just can't get along they leave a pretty comfortable life <laughs> over there I have about 20 minutes before my parents are gonna be here to work and I need to bring all this stuff inside what I'm going to do for my parents for all their help, they already get eggs. They just got a ton of eggs last time yesterday when they were here. So I don't, they don't need more eggs, but I'm going to pack up a package of probably some of the zucchini, a couple of apples, some tomatoes, some peppers, a couple of cucumbers, and I'm going to give them like a CSA share. So I've shared on this channel, a CSA is community support of agriculture, where you basically become a member of a farm. And I've been part of those multiple times, not now, now that I have my own garden, I don't need to be a part of one of those. But I'm gonna share this abundance with my parents as a way to thank them for all the hard work that they're gonna be doing on my property. So I'm looking forward to that. If you guys are new around here and this is your first video, we do a lot of gardening, we do a lot of canning, we do, we do a lot of food prep, bulk cooking, freezer meals, organizing. Actually, that's one thing we're gonna be doing this winter is getting my house organized. You guys say I'm organized all the time, there's certain areas I don't show you <laughs> because they're a mess and they've gotten worse and worse over this last summer because obviously I'm focusing on this stuff, not focusing on what my cupboards look like and they need some serious help. So we're gonna do that this winter and we'll get to it. But for now, it's super fun having you guys in my garden. I just appreciate every one of you. I don't take it for granted that you take time out of your day to spend time with me in my garden. It's one of my favorite places to be and I love that I get to share it with you. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you wanna watch more of my videos, they will pop up right here. You can go watch those. Until next time, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope your gardens are abundant and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. I actually forgot to harvest the tomatillos. So there's some tomatillos in there and just bringing all this abundance and produce in the house was exhausting and tiring. I think I'm actually gonna eat this pear right now. It's perfect. This one was the forgotten on the tree, so it's perfectly ripe, tree ripened. And these are the two boxes of apples that I didn't show in that thumbnail and our beautiful pumpkin. I'm gonna make videos for you on all of this, on how I'm gonna preserve it, how we're gonna deal with it. But for now, my parents just pulled in. We're gonna go paint my front porch. We're gonna finish the front landscaping. And you can come in. Okay. Come look. Huh? Come look. Look at what? Oh. <laughs> Woohoo! Made it.
amazing. And my dad. You guys are going to take home um, a bunch of produce today. Perfect. Love to. Awesome. Wow. Harvest time. Mm-hmm. Seed time and Yeah, I harvest, harvest a bunch of seeds. This is harvest time. I was thinking about doing an apple processing day with Emily and Sarah if they want to come over and do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.